Hi, my name is Bill Kinney. This is the fifth in a series of videos about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations as part of a larger series about complex analysis. And we've been looking at using Mathematica to understand complex addition. Again, our main example has been adding these two complex numbers to get this complex number. And in the last video, I showed you how to use Mathematica to make an animation to illustrate this concept through the use of the command manipulate. Manipulate is causing an animation to happen when you have an animation parameter. This, In this case, I call the animation parameter A. This bit of code right here starts the value of A at 3, but allows me to vary A between 2 and 5, ultimately, through a slider. I've embedded some graphics within that manipulate that, that depend on A. You see A at various spots here. And those graphics are combined as a list plot as well as some graphics objects created with the command graphics that are combined within a show to create what you see right here. And you do see a slider for A as A changes what you see changing are two blue arrows, the black, well, I guess three blue arrows, the black arrow and two red dots based on how I changed A in various spots here. I changed two red dots and three of the arrows involve an A. And you might want to pause the video or maybe rewatch the last video to review how I made these things. It was based on the example, the starting example, <clears throat> that we were looking at before, that 3 plus 6i, which is this dot right here, plus 4 plus 5i, gives you 7 plus 11i. I'd like to show you another way to animate this that is more useful in this context to continue to illustrate the parallelogram law. And I'd also like to talk a little bit more about that triangle inequality that I alluded to in the last one. So let me copy and paste this down. And what I'm going to do is, instead of A representing a number, a, a real number, in this case, a number that starts at 3 and is allowed to vary between 2 and 5, I'm going to let A represent a point, which could be thought of as a complex number. And that point that I'm going to start it at is the point 3, 6, like we've been doing. And then I'm going to use a command called, let's see here, a command called locator with the way that I've done this here, let's take a look at that. I'm starting A at the point 3, 6. And then by putting a locator here, A is not going to vary between specific points that I'm telling it to vary. Instead, what we're going to see is we're going to see a cursor within the graphics that I can use the regular cursor with. I can click on it and I can move that cursor around so instead of changing A in a linear way, I can change it in a, I have two degrees of freedom, I can change it in a two-dimensional way. But A is a point now, it's the complex number 3 plus 6i to start with, and so I need to make other changes. For example, up here, I want this to be the point 3, 6 at first, so instead of typing what I have here, I should type it just an A. And what I've got here is A plus 4 comma 11, what I want that to be is 4, 5 plus A which will be at the point 711 when A is, when A starts out at 3, 6. And make similar changes down here. I want this to just be an A. A is representing a point now, not just a number. Uh, let's, we want this one to be 4, 5 plus A. This one should be an A. This one should be a 4, 5 plus A. And same here, this should be a 4, 5, plus A. This should do it. I'll enter it. We see it's starting out at the same spot, 3 plus 6i, but now notice there's a, like, a target over it. I can click on that and I can move it any way that I want. And now I see the parallelogram law holding no matter where I place the cursor. I could do it with the other point as well point that starts out at 4, 5. I could take all this, copy and paste it over, separate it with a comma, call this B, start B at 4, 5, continue to use locator, and then change 
this tool be, this tool be, etc. Change all these four fives to Bs. And then I'll have two targets in there that I'll be able to change. I'll be able to change both of them. Only one at a time, though. I can change this one, and I can change this one. In each case, again, illustrating the parallelogram law. So take a look at those, the uh, code there. Pause the video, maybe type it out, write it down, whatever you want to do. Uh, take some time to play with it a little bit. In the remaining time, I'm going to come back to the original example once more without an animation and show you some notation to illustrate the triangle inequality and to write it down in formal notation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let uh, z1 equal the complex number 3 plus 6i. Notice how I made the i there again, escape double I escape makes a fancy looking I. I'll let Z2, I'm using this basic math assistant palette to make the, uh, the subscripts there. Z2 equal 4 plus 5I and then there's sum Z1 plus Z2 is 7 plus 11I. When you use absolute value notation, let's see here, like this, that stands for <clears throat> what's called the modulus of the complex number. And as a point in the plane, the complex plane, it represents the distance of the complex number to the origin. As a vector with a certain length and direction, it represents the length, the magnitude of the vector. And you can find it with the Pythagorean theorem, or if you prefer to think of that as the distance formula. And hopefully you recall that, that means you would have to take the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates, or in this case the real and the imaginary parts. So I've got a, I have a 3 squared in here, plus 6 squared. Take the square root of that, 9 plus 36 is 45. This is the square root of 45. That can be simplified a bit because 45 is uh, 5 times 9 and the square root of 9 is 3. You can write this as 3 square root of 5. That's the modulus of z1. Let's do a similar calculation for z2 and we'll use copy and paste to save a little time. Change the 1 to a 2, change the 3 here to a 4 based on this being a 4, change the 6 here to a 5, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 16 plus 25 is 41, and that cannot be simplified anymore. Finally, let's find the modulus of their sum. The sum is 7 plus 11i. So we'll have a 7 and 11 in here, giving us 49 plus 121, which will be 170. Let's see, can we simplify that some more? 170 is divisible by 10, it's 10 times 17. None, none of those, get, we don't get a perfect square in there at all. So square root of 170 cannot be simplified anymore. You can use Mathematica to approximate these quantities. I'd like to do that now. Uh, for example, now I'm, in, now I'm in input mode. N of square root of seven, 170 gives me an approximation for square root of 170. N of square root of 41, and I, I'm using SQRT. I could use the square root symbol on the palette as well. Is that and uh, 3 times the square root of 5 is this. And the triangle inequality, recall, says that the length of any one side is less than or equal to the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. The black arrow is less than or equal to, in length, the sum of the lengths of the blue arrows. 6.40312 plus 6.7082 should be bigger than 
13.0384, and it is. By not much, but a little bit. This triangle is fairly skinny, so that's why it's not much bigger. But if you had a less skinny triangle, the, the difference could be bigger. And that's the end of this video.